and welcome to the April 19th City Council meeting. We are going to call the meeting to order at 7.30. May we have the roll call, please? Council Member Chavez? Here. Here, I'm sorry. Council Member Viscar is absent. Council Member Yu? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Mann? Here. Mayor Sternquist? Here. Uh, I'll make a motion to excuse Council Member Viscar for cause. I'll second. Any objections? Okay, so moved. We have the pleasure of having Pastor Kelty here with us for the invocation. And Pastor Kelty is with Temple City Community of Christ Church located at 5851 Temple City Boulevard. And I just personally want to thank you for all the time you came on to our Zoom meetings the past two years. Thank you so much. You don't know what pleasure this gives me. But I do wish you'd fi fix the clock out front. It's running about 15 minutes late. You know, I noticed that myself. <laughs> You're right. It, it does need to be fixed. All right. Indeed, I'm very, very happy to be here. Baby, pray. Our divine creator, we thank you for this world that you have created. We thank you for this beautiful day that provides warmth and light for all that we do this day. We thank you that we're able to live in this community, in this state and nation, with all the benefits that come from that and all that you have to offer us. It's for this reason that we would come to you and to your presence this evening and ask your blessings upon all that we do say this evening. May we, the city council and their staff, have your wisdom to be with them as they seek to do those things that make this an even better community. We know not what the future may bring, but would ask dear creator that in all we do, we do not so much for our generation, but for the generations to come, that when they hear and now, they may look back upon us with hope, anticipation, and eagerness, saying thank you, thank you, thank you. For the future generations, for the present generations, for all to come, may we, dear Lord, build a city worthy of them, would be our prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we move to item five, ceremonial presentations. And I have the pleasure and the honor of presenting a certificate of recognition to Noelle Palmieri, who is here in the audience. And Noel has served on our Transportation and Public Safety Commission, I believe, for nine years. I mean, six years it, in June, right? Six years, six years in time. June. Wow, how time flies. Mm -hmm. Incredible. And she has been such a great public servant, and we are so grateful for your dedication to all those meetings. And you're not going to be gone from the city, so we know we're going to see you, and we really are appreciative of everything that you've done. Our Transportation and Public Safety Commission hears appeals of parking citations, policies, services, and programs related to public safety, traffic and pedestrian safety, parking, transportation, and emergency services. That's a whole lot of public safety there. Um, Commissioner Palmieri was first appointed to Transportation and Public Safety Commission in 2017. She will have served six years upon the completion of her term on June 30th, 2022. On behalf of the city council and community, I would like to present you with a certificate of rec recognizing you for your dedication to the affairs of the community and residents of the city. So thank you so much, Noel. Would you come up and
Okay, we move to item six, public comments on items not listed on the agenda. We have any public comment? Nope. Item seven, consent calendar. All consent calendar items may be approved in a single motion as recommended unless removed for further discussion. If members of the city council or persons in the audience would like to pull an item, please do so at this time. Uh, Madam Mayor, I move to approve the consent calendar. I'll second. Okay, any objections? So moved. May we have a roll call vote, please? Council Member Chavez? Yes. Council Member Yu? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Man? Yes. Mayor Sternquist? Yes. Okay, that is approved unanimously. We move to item eight, public hearing. There is no public hearing. Item nine, unfinished business, none. Item 10, new business, none. 11, update from the city manager. And we're going to defer to Adam today. So welcome, Adam. Thank you, Mayor Sternquist, uh, members of the city council. Of course, I'm not our city manager, but I am sitting in place of uh, Mr. Cook tonight. Uh, just a few items to present to the uh, City Council. Uh, one, this past Monday was our opening fully indoor uh, facility opening of, um, of uh, city facilities and, and locations. So that includes uh, not only um, City Hall, but also the community center and opening up our rooms for uh, meeting space as well for, our, for the public and our organization. So uh, that started uh, this past Monday. Um, Coming up on Thursday, we have the catalytic converter etching event. So that's gonna be Thursday here at um, City Hall in the parking lot. It's from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. And it's absolutely free, uh, first come, first serve. And we are partnering with our Temple uh, Sheriff Station for that event. Uh, this Saturday is a big day for, for the city and, and our community. We have the grand opening of Primrose Park. Uh, again, that's an open event to all of our public and our residents. Uh, that'll be on Saturday, uh, April 23rd, uh, starting at 2 o'clock p.m. We'll have some nice giveaway items at the event. Uh, we'll have a variety of our elected officials, uh, representatives present as well. And we're really looking forward to finally opening up the park uh, to the community. We've, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback. I think everybody's been waiting to uh, come uh, visit and, and enjoy all these new amenities. And then um, finally, mm -hmm. I just wanted to mention uh, this past Saturday, we held our Easter uh, egg event as well as pancake breakfast extravaganza. So uh, the community turned out in force. Uh, thank you to council member uh, Chavez for being there as well. Um, we sold over 480 tickets for pancakes, which we gave out over a thousand pancakes that, that day, uh, 10,000 Easter eggs to the community and our youth. So uh, it's just really great to be back in person as we transition to more traditional events, programs, and services. And that concludes my report. Adam, will the um, EV stations be up and opening on Saturday once yes. we open the park? Thank you for bringing that up, Mayor. Uh, yes, we have uh, actually four charge point stations at Primrose Park. Uh, those are going to be publicly accessible for um, anyone to use that has a EV electric vehicle um, that they would, um, you know, like to charge up to the max as long as uh, there's one available. But yes, all four of those will be available starting Saturday and then seven days a week. And there's no charge currently for so currently right now we're we're having it as a pilot program where there is no there are no fees attached to that that's something we will explore come back with um usage and rates for the council to consider maybe at a at a future date but at this moment uh as part of the grand opening uh it will be at no charge to the community and that's our first ev stations in the city other than the sheriff station correct correct um very first at any of our public parking lots and facilities so a lot of firsts with Primrose Park. Very exciting. So come out and enjoy the grand opening of the park. And I know, Jerry, you'll be there to take some lovely pictures of kids entering the park. All right. Thank you, Adam. Update from our city attorney. Greg, do you have anything? I wish I had stuff as fun as that. Um, 
as the city know, or as the council knows, and the city residents know, uh, the state of California has quite a few new housing laws uh, that have come down, and the attorney general's office has started a new task force to investigate cities' responses to those. Um, the council, I'm, I'm sure, has seen, and the, the public may have heard, uh, but a, a blogger sort of has put the city in the uh, attention of the Department of Housing and Community Development and possibly the Attorney General's Office with respect to the SB9 ordinance that we adopted. Um, not the hugest deal. Uh, we don't expect there to be any um, major uh, confrontation about that. We do expect that we'll hear from HCD. They will give us some advice on what we can do. We'll go back and forth with them a little bit, um, speak with you all a little bit on it, and you know, come to some uh, reasonable conclusion. But uh, it is likely that uh, in light of the way the Attorney General's office has worked with uh, the city of Pasadena, for one, that we'll, we'll be getting a nasty letter. So I wanted to let you know and let the public know that we expect that to happen. We expect to work through things with them. Uh, and you know, reach a, a conclusion that the city of Temple City can live with, um, but that, you know, uh, will, will not cause HCD to uh, raise the stakes, so to speak. Uh, on that same front, four cities, charter cities like Temple City, have banded together to file a lawsuit against the state, uh, stating that SB 9 infringes charter cities' rights uh, to deal with their own housing. Um, we're obviously monitoring that. If that's successful, then we will again be coming back to you as a council and uh, seeing what your interest might be in um, changing our SB9 ordinance um, in light of whatever the court does. So we have a lot going on in the housing world right now. Uh, it's a big part of what city attorneys are looking at. Um, most of it gets overblown by the press, um, but I wanted to at least give you that tonight. Any questions? I'm happy to take them. Any questions? Okay. Is that it, Greg? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Council reports regarding ad hoc or standing committee meetings. Do we have any? No reports. No reports? Okay. Council items separate from the city manager's regular agenda. Council Member Chavez? Uh, nothing this evening, thank you. Council member, you? Uh, nothing this evening either. But um, looking forward to the grand opening of the, or re grand opening of the Primrose Park. <clears throat> Mayor Pro Tem? Uh, thank you, Mayor. No, I just want to also say I'm looking forward to Saturday and hoping uh, we, we see a, a, a good show of force from our community to support the grand opening of the park. Very exciting. Okay, Thank great. you. Um, I wanted to ask Greg if if I'd like to set up um, a couple of ad hoc committees. I would wait until Council Member Vascara is back also, so he can be part of that, and um, also our City Manager. Uh, what is the process again? We just so what we've done in the past, if they were ad hoc committees. Um, Really, at this time on the agenda, the council has just um, begun the discussion and creating an ad hoc committee really happens at the will of the mayor, so it just sort of moves forward. Um, if you'd like to work with the city manager, wait for council member Viscara, it could be agendized uh, and then that way you could look at your standing committees and your ad hocs at the same time and work through those. So I will let uh, Brian know and and I'm sure Adam will as well, and, and we can get that as a separate agenda item so that you and he can work through um, what what kind of committees you'd like and the rest of the council members can and have some notice. And he can reach out to um, the council members to see if they're interested sure. before sure. also? Yep. Okay. Isn't, um, isn't the next meeting when we actually usually reappoint people to those, those committees, Peggy, is that? So maybe we so could just we piggyback just onto that. Do it then? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, I have um, the only <clears throat> comment that I have, um, oh, not comment, well, thought anyway, is that today the mask mandate was lifted for 
transportation. So bus drivers will now have riders getting on the um, buses without masking. And so the transportation industry is, you know, struggling to get take off all those masking signs that say you can't be on the bus without a mask. So it happened pretty quickly and overnight that they got the word that this is what was going to happen. So I know today was just a somewhat hectic day with Foothill Transit trying to take down all the messaging and all the electric messaging that are in the software programs. So they were somewhat challenged today and um, some of the bus drivers expressed concern about just how quickly the no mask mandate was lifted because they're still very concerned about dealing with so many different people throughout the day. So we'll probably have some more challenges as um, time moves forward and we see how this goes and hopefully tempers don't get to the extent of any confrontations with um, bus drivers and patrons. So just wanted to mention that. Um, do I think that's it there. Do we have any um, additional Wait, public? Ma Mayor oh, Stern Sternquist, uh, regarding your comment about the masking thing, I'm curious um, for our dial a ride is does how does that affect does that affect our dial a ride policies or does that Correct. That would, I believe under the the new CDC guidance, it would be all forms of public transit, including that. Um, most likely, I can double check and follow back up with um, the council regarding if there's any specific um, operational procedures that Southland Transit has, which is our provider for dollar right. Okay. Um, but that's definitely something we can follow up with additional okay. information. I think that that'd be that's, good that's for a us good to know. That's a good question, William. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So thank, thank you thank for following up on that. All right. Do we have additional public comments on items not listed on the agenda? Okay, well, it doesn't seem like we should be adjourned, <laughs> but we are adjourned. Well, Madam Mayor, I think it's the record.